All right, hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. My name is Shane Olson and today we're going to be sculpting another mystery character and we'll see how it goes. So welcome, welcome. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Let's go. Let's just get started here. Hey Mark, how are you? Welcome, welcome. All right, I think I'm going to just start with a kind of a just a skin color, maybe more red. Yeah, there we go. A ball of skin. <laughs> hey, what's up, Brad? How are you? <laughs> All right. Hey, Neil. Welcome, welcome. Okay. I've been having a lot of fun with these uh, caricatures. And I just want to keep them going. This is a different one. Um, yeah, we'll see how this one goes. I'm, I'm a little nervous because of who it is and what it is, but I'm going to do my best and see what happens. How is everyone today? Wonderful fall day, another one. The weather here has been amazing. I might try the uh, same trick that I used last time with the mouth. We'll see. We'll see. Hi, hey, Ibrahim. I have no idea, honestly. I. I don't, I'm a volunteer here, so I can only guess. I can only have my guesses. And my guess would be to integrate ZBrush with other Maxon products. That would be my first guess. Just getting this cranium, now this this is, he's got a, it's a, it's male, I'll give you that. Got a really interesting head. Maybe really small. What's with the cartoon hand sculpting? Oh, it's just a, it's a, it's a program called Spud Arm that just allows me to do a, an overlay, and this is a hand that I made. It looks like a bear's arm. Just kind of fun. And you guys can see where my cursor's at and what I'm doing, so. Hey, Tolkvan, how you doing? Okay, let's see. Try a move infinite. Rather than using the knife brush, I'm just going to move it like that. See how that goes. <laughs> Hong Kong Fooies are. <laughs> now that's a name I haven't heard for a long time. <laughs> Is this another real person? Um, yes. But it's a it's a character. So it's a real actor, but it's a character. And I should start doing uh, some some caricatures of people um, in their 
in their movie roles, you know, more like, you know, like Jim Carrey with the mask or Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow or something like that, you know, as who, rather than just do a, a Johnny Depp, you know, be like as. Hey, Panic, welcome, welcome. Hong Kong Fui. <laughs> okay, no, I think I'm gonna use a sphere. And I think I need, to, the way my workflow has changed, it's almost like I wanna get rid of these lower spheres up here and just stick with the higher resolution one because I just never use the lower ones. And this one's actually too low for what I how I do things now, so. Interesting. Yep, it's another guess the character session. Welcome, Thomas. This will be a super interesting one. Hey, Michael, welcome. I want to see how far I can push it. What's the specs of my PC? Um, <laughs> Steve Seagal. Um, it, it's it's kind of it's a it's an AMD seventeen hundred. I want to say. Um, it's got two two ten eighty graphics cards in it. Older. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna split this off here. Chuck Close said the quickest way to make an enemy out of a friend was to do a portrait of him. <laughs> well, good things I'm, I'm not friends with these people. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Hey, Mini Chicks, how's it going? Looking to run ZBrush on the Surface Pro. Um, I have I have a Surface Pro, and I have used ZBrush on it. Um, the problem is not with the C with the uh, specs on it. The problem is with the real estate. So your screen is so small. Um, it just you run out of room essentially. But it's it still works. It still functions. It's uh it's good in a pinch. But I wouldn't use it as my main production uh, PC, if that makes sense. Okay. Hey, Cricket, how are you? No neck. No neck Johnny is what we're working on today. Johnny, no neck. <laughs> Uh, Nibby question, do you have any advice on how to start your model in a good size resolution? I was having an issue this weekend where I had my basic shape and then I dynameshed it and reduced my polys instead of increase. Um, so if you follow along with how I'm doing things, I don't use dynamesh anymore. Um, I used to, I don't use dynamesh. I use Sculptress Pro these days. And um, if you go grab my ruler file, I give it away for free over on my website at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It actually comes with a ruler, but um, Sculptress Pro likes to work with when your um, model is, is quite large. So I scale it up to work on it, to work with Sculptress Pro about this size as compared to my ruler. If I turn on the floor, you can kind of see how big it is. It's, it's much larger, but 
eventually, if I'm going to 3D print the thing, I will scale it down to my ruler. Never, never scale the ruler up to your character. Always scale your character down to the ruler. Um, the ruler is in a fixed position um, specifically. So, and then you can see, like, I have average male and female height on here in centimeters. Um, but what I usually do is this is real world millimeters. So I use the ruler a lot for 3D printing and exporting in, in real world scale. So this is a good scale to work in with Sculptress Pro. So my triangles can get small enough because I work with uh, adaptive size turned off. And, um, oops. Yeah, so that's how I work. And if you just follow along, you can kind of see how, how I do things. But right now, um, these are just stretched out spheres. Nothing special. And then when you, when you download my ruler file, it also comes with these brushes. And so you can use these brushes. These are the, the exact brushes I use to do all the stuff I do. So no surprises. But I went away from the Dynamesh workflow because of the guesswork. I don't, I didn't like um, guessing exactly the what you ran into with, um, you know, what what should the resolution of the Dynamesh be? And I'd much rather um, be in control of that a little bit more. And Sculptress Pro allows me to do that. <laughs> Under the giant. That'd be a good one. So what Sculptress Pro allows me to do is if I turn it on right up here, and then I can adjust my my poly sizes a little bit. And you can see I can fill this with triangles on the fly. I turn down my my intensity here. There we go. So it's really easy to flood fill an object with a uh, mesh density like this. And yeah, I just I really like working this way because then I don't run out of uh, geometry. I just keep going. Whereas with Dynamesh, I have to continually re-Dynamesh. And that's no fun because um, and if I don't have keep groups turned on, it will merge things together. And I don't want, I don't want to merge things together. I like to keep things separate for as long as possible so it remains editable. Yeah, yeah, Dynamesh will shrink your sculpt. It will bridge between gaps. Um, it will make you lose your details. Like if I wanted to keep this crease, for example, it will just destroy that crease, destroy the crease between objects. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons I kind of moved away from the Dynamesh workflow. Um, what I do like about Dynamesh, though, is if I'm experimenting, like specifically with like fine art sculpture like Ryan Kingsland uses. Um, it's perfect for that. I'm trying to decide if I want to add. Yeah, I think I will. So am I a Boolean method guy? Um, occasionally, if I, if I need to, um, usually I'll use Booleans, live Booleans with um, hard surface stuff. But with organic stuff, I typically don't. I just keep adding pieces. Like, for example, I'm, I was like, should I pull the nostrils out? Um, should I make a new object and, and build it that way? I just, I like to, um, I like to continuously add objects because it, it helps me. It helps me, like, figure out the shape of things and how things work together. Diehard Dynamesh user after Molly Machine? No, we'll never again. <laughs> I'll show you the light. I'll show you the way. Pets of Warcraft, thank you. I do not see it on my screen. 
you guys see it, I do not. I see it in my preview up above, but I don't actually see it on my screen. I see my own hand. Not a bare hand. <laughs> I can just start kind of making this an actual nasal labial fold. Pets of Warcraft. I actually have a I have a Diablo pet in Warcraft. I have to brag about that one. I bought the collector's edition when Warcraft first came out a long, long, long time ago. And it came with that Diablo pet. So it's pretty funny to have him chase you around. Want to be the real life mod and make your hand invisible? Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. I'm just going to kind of curl this down a little bit. Enrique, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to try something with... I'm just going to use a sphere for the, his lower lip because he has a mustache. A big one. Been a Guild Wars 1 and 2 player for decades. Guild Wars 2 has quite the pet repository. Nice. You know, I played Guild Wars 2 for quite some time and uh, I don't play it anymore. It's been a while. My kids, my kids have been playing it off and on. I actually contributed a couple characters to Guild Wars 1. I can't remember the race. They were like nomads of some sort. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Yep, a little bit. <laughs> of course you did. How do you make everything watertight when you prepare the model for printing? If you don't use Dynamesh, I use Remesh by Union. That does the same thing, but it will keep all of your nice, crisp, tight edges. If Dyna didn't merge and melt automatically, it would be great. Yep, it would. But Remesh by Union is the thing. So you just kind of keep, keep all your pieces separate until you're ready to merge everything for, for 3D printing or um, sculpting later on on top of it um so here i'll show you what i did last stream and you can and i'll show you i i took it off stream and i finished it up um and i'll show you like the how it how it was merged and how i kept some of the creases and got rid of others okay is it this one Hold on a second. I think that's an earlier one. I have two places I save these models and I can never remember which one where, where I saved what. I need to get rid of one and merge them together. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay, let's see if this is. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah, this is, you guys can tell who this is. Um, so basically like I had these, these pieces were separate pieces and I merged them together and it kind of kept this crease right here and yeah, it kept, it kept the creases on the eyelids and it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a super beautiful thing, but, uh, thanks. Yeah, this I, I spent some time offline and finished him up. 
Um, anyway, good old Nicolas Cage. <laughs> uh, funny. So, yeah, so this, I mean, this is the print. I've been working on this for 20 minutes, so ev eventually it will become, hopefully, the person I'm wanting it to be, so. When you create these characters, do you 2D draw them out first, or do you just envision them in your head and sculpt them? Um, I, I have two screens, and so on my second screen, I have a whole, uh, a whole page of reference images, reference photos, and then... I kind of put them all together in my head and borrow things from, you know, here and there and merge them all together and make the character that I want to make. So, thanks, comics. How you doing? So, I used to get into caricature a lot when I was younger. Um, so, I've had some practice at it in the past. I really enjoy it. Um, I have some, some of my good friends that are amazing caricature artists. David Bedreau is one of them. Mike May is another. Jason Seiler. Jason, oh, those guys are amazing. Yeah, David, he, yeah, he's amazing. And he's got, he's been collecting Star Wars stuff recently. And so he, now he's into sculpting Star Wars stuff for fun. And it's just really, really cool to see what he collects and then what he makes from his own collection. <laughs> he works on uh, American Dad. He's an animator and drawn 2D animator for American Dad. Super cool fellow. This is looking nothing like the person I'm modeling yet, so bear with me. See. Yeah, yeah, David Bedreau, he Well, he, he collects some Muppets and then he makes some of his own. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of liking where that's, that's headed. I want to make his cranium super small. Mm -hmm. Even smaller than that, I'm not sure. Because it's funny. You got it already, trick really, <laughs> Sarah. You win. Yep, I had to. I had to. Yep, 20, 24 minutes. Like, how? <laughs> no comic. Sarah got it. Cricket got it. Sorry. Yeah, never fun. Never fun. Okay. 
this must be in the same poly group. Yep. <laughs> Funny. Oops. Just want to get some edges on here. There we go. Carlos, nope. Cricket already guessed. If you look up in chat, it is Rob Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid. Yeah, that's why I'm so kind of I'm like, oh man, this hair is gonna be nuts. So we'll see how it goes. I might try different different attempts at different things trying to get his get his hair to work, but we'll get there. We'll do it. Oh, did he say that? Oh. That hurts. That hurts my heart. Totally doing the Harry Potter special early, uh, early this year. Wow. Dang. You must have known. Let me give him some big, big eyelids. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Inflate this. Gotta give him those big kind eyes. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> and some lower eyelids too. He's got those big kind of heavy eyes. <laughs> What's up, Jerome? Hordor. <laughs> uh, close, close. How are you, sir? Let's see, duplicate. Bill. works pretty well just scooch it on down I'm good I'm good really good actually hey Jerome do you have any of your stuff online like uh you don't have a collection of your stuff right Pushing clay. Hey, back to the roots. You guys know, don't know who Jerome is. Jerome is like Captain Clay Sculptor Pixar guy. So if you don't know who he is, you should. <laughs> Thanks for coming to hang out at my stream. 
always appreciate it. No online presence. Oh, goodness. We're going to have to change that. Because besides the films, we got we to gotta share your work with the world. It's so good. It's kind of a, it's kind of a hidden thing, right? Like, not many people get to see it unless they look for the behind the scenes stuff. That's how I found you. <laughs> No problem play now enjoy it this is when i get to do my personal work so it's always good that's true I get all the books and all the, all the things. My whole closet is full of art of books. And I'm sad they were talking about doing an art of Disney Infinity book back when I was working there and they never did. And that makes me sad because there was so much great 2D concept art for that. So much. Make his eyebrows squarish. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'm liking where this is headed. This guy's character is, is his hair, right? It's all the hair, so. one of your favorites hey what's up MJ uh, what do we have this week Jonah Hill uh, Hagrid yes <laughs> it is uh, it is Hagrid I'm trying to that's a good guess yep cricket guessed it earlier doesn't take much I guess <laughs> I get the, the big the big bodied I mean, I, I, I want to push it. Like, I want to really, really push it. Like, so his head is just tiny on a ginormous body. Um, my favorite art of books. Um, first one I ever, ever had was Toy Story, and it hold, holds a, a, a special place in my heart. Um, because that's when I was going to school. That's when I was all super jazzed about 3D art in general. And um, I, would, I would just scour that thing, just pour over it, you know. because I loved looking at all the concept art from all those guys. Like all the different versions Woody went through and all the different versions Buzz went through and you know, and then what they ended up with and how they ended up pulling it off. It's just really inspiring and still my favorite. I like some of the um I have a, the Bugs Life one as well. Um, I have some uh, DreamWorks ones like uh, How to Train Your Dragon, the first uh, Kung Fu Panda. Um, yeah, good stuff. Okay. How about you? What's your favorites? Okay, let's start to block in this hair and see where we're at with it. As I said, this is gonna be a, a game changer. Okay, I know it's gonna be darker brown than this brown, but I just wanted a different color than the skin just to kinda um, look at what? 
Black Friday reel from Toy Story 1? I don't know that I've seen it. Oh, I guess I didn't fill this with the color. Hold on a second. Okay. Tough so many. One of mine needs to be... Oh, Tangled is amazing. Yes. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's why, because it was masking it. Okay. I'm a dummy. So it's interesting with ZBrush and Symmetry, you can't, you can't move an object to the center really because it's, it's working against itself. So the only way you can really do it is with um, inflation, inflate, not inflation. So <laughs> inflate will close the gap, but I don't want to close it completely. Just, I want to get it close. Actually, I could close it completely and then I'll just mirror and weld it. Early concept for a scene really dark compared to how the movie ended up oh yes i did see that i did see that yeah woody was like so jealous that he was like wanting to take take buzz out <laughs> yes i have seen that yeah he kind of turned into a jackass he's like nope i i'm the i'm the king of this toy box <laughs> big and bushy and then just kind of it will disappear into his beard here <laughs> it's funny with no other hair <laughs> Oops, I'm going to get, just block in the rest here. Marvel Special Werewolf by Night. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, the old monster movie feel nice. It's in a Marvel one? Huh. That's cool. All right, I'm going snake hook on this one. Should we get Ashley to show up? Oh, it's only an hour. Nice. Very cool, I'm down for that. Okay. So it's... Jerome, are you still around? I need to, I wanna to talk to you about that, that movie Damon Bard's working on for, is it Netflix? With, uh, the director of James and the Giant Peach. What's the name of that movie? Damon's been posting. Uh, if you don't know who Damon Bard is, he's he's also a, an amazing um, traditional clay sculptor as well as digital sculptor. Henry Henry S Selick is the director. Hey, Kenya, how are you? Let's see. Wendell and Wild. Yes, Wendell and Wild. It it looks really good. The characters are really interesting to me. Okay. 
Yeah, this is going to be, looks like helmet hair for a minute, but. And see, as I'm dragging with the, with the um, snake hook brush, it's just continually adding more geometry, so I don't run out of geometry. It just keeps on giving. Which is good, because we're going to go crazy with it here in a minute. <laughs> hey Steven, is it saying I'm Pablo? I don't I think the names are wrong more than they're right. Okay. So I'm gonna do two parts. I'm gonna do the hair going down over his shoulders and then I'll do the beard underneath it so they can kind of blend. Cheers from Ecuador. Hello, welcome to the stream. Yeah, the names are the names are like I said, the names are always wrong. It seems like that's okay. You guys know who I am. Okay, let's inflate this. My name is Shane Olson. If you didn't know who I was. I'm not Pablo, even though Pablo's amazing. I think I want to do it. So there's a lot of times when his hair goes up over his coat. I think I'm just going to have his coat come up over his hair. <laughs> Let me go lower with this poly count. It's just easier to ma manage. Um, when did I get the bear claw cursor? Um, I, I just, I made it not too long ago and, uh, I just tried it out for fun. I saw somebody else using a 2d hand on their stream and basically you can replace that 2d hand with whatever you want. And so I rendered out my bears hand and, and set it up and Basically, it's just, it's two images. It's the hand and the wrist. And you just, you just line it up with the pivot point where the wrist bends. So as I'm coming down here, see the wrist is bending down. And as I go way up here, the wrist bends up. So it kind of looks natural. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Henry Selick direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to see it. I haven't seen it yet either. The characters look super interesting to me. gonna add a lot of volume to this what is the mod called it's called spud arm it's just an overlay that you can do in OBS so I use it like with a, a, a chroma key like a green screen <laughs> this hair makes him look like Cheech <laughs> Cheech and Chong or something it's funny or may, now it's starting to look a little, uh, um, what's the, what's the pirate from Peter Pan? Captain Hook. Oh, Captain Hookish. Ob obelix? I don't know what that means. <laughs> what's obelix? Um, it's mentally accepted for a moment. Then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> nice, nice. This is in honor of Hagrid indeed. Yes. It's Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid. Oh, French comic book. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar.
How do I find me an art station? Um, Neil, would you mind posting a link to my art station if you wouldn't mind? Hello from Sri Lanka. Show us the reference you have. Um, I have a whole bunch of reference on my other screen and it's split into, I'm not using pure ref, which I should, but it's split into a whole bunch of different images just kind of floating on my other monitor. Okay. We gotta get his beard on there, otherwise he's like looking looking Cheech and Chongish. All right. Okay, beard. Beard incoming. Whoops, I'm just gonna make this as just ginormous. So I want the roundness. Actually, I'm just gonna pull it way up here. There we go, there we go, okay. I'm starting to see it now, I'm starting to see it. Just found the art station, oh, thank you very much. Scully Young's done some amazing Hagrid illustrations. Yeah, and so Corey Loftus did one of him on his motorcycle with his goggles on holding holding Harry as he's taken off and it's just really yeah I it was a little too involved for what I'm doing today but yeah this is uh <laughs> Gorgio looks like he's like drowning in his beard <laughs> There you are, Peter. You got it. Yeah, I might do I'm gonna I might block in this full character with this one. Let's see, I don't want to show his chin, just his lower lip there. And then I want to tuck his mustache right up underneath his nose. Close that on up. Hey, Eric. Oh, the, yeah, the balloon beard is just huge. <laughs> Let's see. All right, now reach inside and pull his mustache out. Reach inside the balloon. Um, will I be doing the, a Halloween themed one in the next couple weeks? Maybe. I've just been enjoying these um, caricatures so much that uh, I keep doing them. <laughs> So maybe I can work out some kind of a, a Halloween themed caricature. I was thinking about the the sisters from Hocus Pocus. They did a good job at that second film. Looks like that'd be that'd be kind of fun, especially the main um, with the teeth. Is it Bette Midler? Is that her name? Hey Emma, how are you? Welcome to the stream. There we 
go. Get that mustachio all tucked up in there. I kind of want it to follow his smile and then go down. So let's, you know, I'm going to weld this together. Aaron Weld. Thanks, always happy to watch a ZBrush live while modeling. Awesome. Model along. Okay, let's give him a bit of a haggard smile here. And a big old bushy mustachio back here. Go all the way up here. That looks kind of weird, but going to tuck it in back there. Maybe not. Mm. I'm mumbling to myself. Sometimes I do that when I'm like thinking. Like, hmm, how would this go? fan have you had a chance to check out magpie's avatar yes i i did the kickstarter for that one can't wait for the book to come can't wait for the art okay <laughs> let's give him some eyebrows he's looking naked eyebrow naked Hello, um, let's see, maybe you can help out with a question. I've modeled something in Blender Maya and I want to do the details in ZBrush. Is there a way to subdivide the model and keep the edges? Um, yes, so if you've modeled it in Maya, not sure about Blender, but if you model it in Maya and you have the edges, um, you can export it either, well, you can use GoZ. And so GoZ will go back and forth between ZBrush, it's a plugin. It'll go back and forth between ZBrush and Maya and I don't know if it will keep the subdivisions, but it will keep the edges. So you can try that. Um, it's been a long time since I've used the Gozi plugin for Maya, but it works well. It does. And it keeps the scale really nice. So uh, check that out. All right. Let's get his big, thick, bushy brows going. I think that'll make a big difference. All right, split. Hey Val, welcome to the stream. Okay. I wonder if I could just get rid of those creases, subdivide it. couple times I'm going to pull these this down a little bit on the inside here No, well maybe not. <laughs> That's giving an an expression I don't want. Kind of has this semi-worried, kind-eyed fellow. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, 
Uh, weird question, but still curious. Is your Cintiq a flat horizontal angle while you sculpt? Do you prop it up? Um, it is on, I would say, a 40 degree angle. Maybe 45? Yeah. My ultimate setup that I love, that I still need to get back to sometime is, yeah, it's almost at the angle that this picture is right here. See this picture in front of me? It's almost at that angle. Um, it's a 27 inch older Cintiq and, uh, just by Wacom, it's a Wacom Cintiq, but I'm, I'm really curious to see and try out the new ones that they have going on that have buttons on the back. Like, uh, they're almost like a controller triggers on the back with some extra buttons. Um, so I'm pretty interested in that and checking that out, but that means I'll have to sell this one. And I just, I don't like selling stuff. <laughs> so anyway we'll see how that goes okay i'm gonna add some warmth and stuff to his face it's funny he's got this neck sticking out the back here um what's the name of that pen um it's this hand is it's uh it's a character that i made but it's using a software called spud arm and I just load in two images and line up the pivots and it works well. It's just an overlay for OBS being green screened out. Okay. So let's do, I think I'm almost ready. I think I'm gonna combine this together. I think we're at that point. Save it first. Okay. And then it's taking a minute. I'm saving it to a external drive just so I have it backed up. Okay. So this is his face. If you can recall, hey, Zhao, thank you. You have more videos or courses out there. Um, so did you, so I have a course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. Um, you can see the my logo right here, 3D Character Workshop. You can head over there and learn all about that course. Um, I'm actually working on the future content and I might... Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I'm working on some some future content that I'm really, really excited about. Yeah, funny you should ask. <laughs> I have a, a very large online course with hours and hours and hours of content. So if you want to sculpt characters like this, um, feel free to check it out. And I also give away these brushes and my user interface and my um, ruler file for free. Same website, front page. Scroll down about halfway and you can see it. Okay, so in order to um, stitch this, some people were asking why don't I use DynaMesh any longer? And the reason why is because of Remesh by Union, which is my favorite stitching tool ever. So if you look at these poly groups, these objects, you can see they're all in their own poly groups here, but they're not stitched together, which means I can move them independently of each other. And if I want to stitch them together, I use this thing that I found one day. I was just kind of checking things out. Um, underneath this gear right here on the gizmo icon, there's these remesh by, remesh by Dynamesh, remesh by Union and remesh by Z remesher. And so basically this will rebuild your mesh um, using these methods. But this one doesn't actually rebuild your mesh. It only rebuilds the area where it stitches, which is, th that's the beautiful thing about it. So it's not gonna just destroy your sculpt. It's going to stitch it, that's it. And basically it's using um, live Boolean, the way live Boolean will uh, bool objects together, but without doing any Boolean operations. It's just doing the stitching part. So if I click on that, you'll see it uh, it changes my poly group colors, which is not a big deal. And it still has this bounding box around it. You have to find the gear, it's kind of hidden in there, and then say accept. And now if we go look at this closely, you can see that it's been stitched. 
So it makes triangles all around the stitched areas. And if you turn the poly groups off, it looks exactly the same. You can't tell. If I were to dynamesh this, it would melt all these edges. Um, and it would shrink the mesh slightly. And I would have to guess as far as like the, the density. Um, so this is just a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Um, now what I can do is I can come in here and get rid of the creases that I don't want. Like say the transition between the nose and the cheek. Um, I can turn on Sculptors Pro. Make sure I have a good density. See that's too, too big. That's a good, good density now. I want to even kind of go smaller than this. There we go. So just check your mesh before you do it. So you can just come in here and just get rid of these creases now that you don't want. I want to keep this one. I want to get rid of this one. I want to get rid of the transition from the nose up here. Transition between the lower and upper head. Just uh, smooth that out. And then I can also use this fill brush right here. And just kind of come across and just fill this up a little bit to build that transition and then smooth it back down. Did you see Savannah XYZ video where she details the remesh by union method? I did not. I need to make my own. Uh, Alessandro, yes, this is live. Welcome to the stream. I am here. Just gonna smooth out this transition and this one. And then I don't like this peak, so I can grab the move brush and just kind of scoot that down and smooth it out. Stonus, because uh, ZBrush is the best digital sculpting application on the planet. I'll just say it right now. And you're watching the official Maxon ZBrush live stream. So a little biased on this channel. And I would like to keep the conversation on ZBrush, if you wouldn't mind, hopefully you understand. This, this is the official ZBrush live stream. Okay, so that's kind of how I can work all the transitions out. There we go. see my wireframe <laughs> yeah I always get the names wrong um what makes you do stylized characters? What do you feel about realism? Um, stylized characters are just my thing. I love them. I love the design. I love the challenge. Um, I have nothing against realism. I just, I, I, I prefer stylized. It's just my thing. So um, it's, it's my lane, if you will. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just like, I like doing it. Um, hey, Steamworks, welcome to the stream. Shane Lane, totally. Replicating reality is boring. It kind of is, it, it, can, it can be fun. Um, like a lot of my friends like it, like Brendan Bankston. Uh, he's another streamer on here and he does, he loves the doing realism. Okay. Let's get some color on his face now. Hey, MJ, yeah, that'd be kind of fun, huh? Be a good one. Oh, gotta pick the right. 
got this super red nose. It's fun. Just warm him on up. ZBrush is part of Maxon. Yes. I think they announced it's been a, they announced it was, has it been a year? How long has it been? Anthony, I don't understand that. Sorry. I'm a one language dude. Come on, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, wow, you're saying RGB is something new? Like polypaint? Polypaint's been around for a long, long time in ZBrush. Anthony, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give him, whoops. Bleep. Just give him some pupils just so he's not ghost eyes. You say the character workshop would be good for absolute beginners? Yes. I have specific uh, courses just for beginners. Okay, let's work on that beard. Um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to block in his his body like his upper body anyway just really quick just so I can get a sense of scale uh, because <laughs> I want to take it big I want to I want to go crazy with it okay save in this first always save before you take it somewhere extreme hey James great info as always do you do all the meshes have to be in the same tool for the Z re remesh by union yes they do And that's kind of the beauty of it. That's how you can control it. So you can actually just remesh um, just certain pieces to each other. For example, I did not mesh the eyelids into the head. I wanted to keep those separate and editable. So they are, they're, they're different objects. So then I can leave them and, and keep this really nice crease across the top. Um, actually gonna Add some geometry to these and smooth them out a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's it's really, really, really nice to use. Okay, so let's block in a big old body. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Remesh by Union respects masking as well. I never really use that feature, but it's it's good to have. It's good that it's there. Okay, I'll put it right there. Make this a lighter brown. Uh, 
M&Ms. <laughs> Does look like an M and M. All right, my brush is hit the draw size cap. Got to turn dynamic off. <laughs> the tan M and M of your your belly <laughs> all right give them a bit of a gut this is what i want to why i want to do this is just to see what the body would do and i want to make it just gigantic like so his head looks like a eraser maybe this There we go. <laughs> okay. He's such a square guy. <laughs> hey, what's going on? A cubed in the his house. Okay, what did I do? I didn't get to put my draw over there. Why? Ball man. What's up, ball man? <laughs> um, how far are pushing this? Live, will you make body and other stuff? Any retopology posing? I usually don't get to that. I, I sculpt for two hours. It's been an hour and 15 minutes so far. Um, sometimes I'll push it to the next the next week. Um, I typically save my full bodied characters for my courses. And I just, because I can't give everything away, right? And And posing and all that. I talk about all that in my courses. Although I have done some live streams of full bodies in the past, you can go check those out on the Pixel Logic live stream YouTube channel. The non-sweetness of the peanut balances, the sweetness of the M&Ms. You know what I love? Uh, pretzel M&Ms. Isn't that, that's a thing, right? <laughs> uh. Turn Sculptors Pro off. How are you doing, Ashley, by the way? You guys, if you don't know who Ashley is, you should. She's another streamer on here. She does amazing creatures and stylized characters. She streams on Wednesdays, typically. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of kind of Klaus-ish. Yeah, definitely. I want to make him super squatty body. Love the face of him, yeah. <laughs> this is my take of on on Hagrid. It's, it's, I'm just trying to trying to get him there. Um, do you ever remesh or retop the eyelids to the head before they're ready to go, or should that generally be the last step? I, I usually save it till the last or never um, in order to keep the sharp plane transition. Um, yeah, for rigged characters, you'll want to eventually retop everything together. Um, but for, like, I, I typically make these guys for 3D printing. That's also my lane. Um, I mean, I, I've been a game character in the past, but these days I'm all about 3D printing because I worked on uh, Disney Infinity, which we basically transitioned from game character to toy maker. And I fell in love and never looked back. And so I, even though I do teach how to make game characters in my course, 
Um, I'm just kind of focusing on 3D printing. Moving forward. Let's give him a haggard butt. What's up, haggard butt? He's a square body now. No more round body. Literally click the link for the hand model animation. <laughs> oh, really? For this? For this hand, like floating over the top? <laughs> well, welcome, Adam. Come for the, the bare arm, stay for the sculpt. <laughs> High five for the Klaus re reference. Yeah, yeah, that's the best Christmas movie. A bunch of my friends worked on that movie. Sandro Clouseau. Such a good one. Um, let's see. I do love the peanut butter. Uh, did I miss anything else? If you if I missed your question, if you had a question, I missed it. Feel free to post it again. Okay, and he has a coat that hangs all the way down over with all this stuff happening down here, so not worried about it too much. And guys, I want to take, I want to go bigger. <laughs> I want to go bigger. In, in, in biggin. <laughs> I need to, I need to make his beard match for sure, but there we go. I want to make his nose bigger too. He's got this neck sticking out. That's not going to work for us. I'm going to get rid of this piece. Yeah, Klaus, he had a gigantic body for sure. Uh, you know, that's not a bad reference to pull in either, is some Klaus reference. Okay. Let's see where we're at on that beard. That's not too bad. I'm going to bring it all the way down here. Almost to his... Okay. <laughs> and then his hair. I'm trying to decide if I make it go up over the back or not. But I'm 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 looking at this reference that has his his head down inside his collar and it looks really nice. So I may just do that. Okay. And no he doesn't have arms yet. I just wanted to put that in for reference. Let's get more uh, volume. All right, Ian, thanks for hanging out, man. Okay. Let's let's uh, honestly let's get that collar in here just so we can kind of use that as a guide as well. Saw the cover and thought the big hand was part of the sculpting. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, and I I love the little hand down in front of my face too. See, it's like a like I have a bear claw hand, but you know I have a normal hand. It's right here. <laughs> it's just an overlay. This is screen overlays. I like it because you guys can see exactly where my cursor is. Okay, collar time. I have a normal hand. It's right here. <laughs> oh, got to turn on symmetry.
I try, Sarah, I try. <laughs> How did this hand follow your mouse in the video? Um, it's a program called Spud Tablet. Spud Arm, sorry, Spud Arm. Like the potato. It's just an overlay for OBS. But I modeled and rendered out this hand and then split it into two images and then you just have to line it up with the with the pivot points and it works. It looks way more complex than it is, guaranteed. But it's a lot of fun and people seem to like it, so I think it's here to stay. And eventually I might make a VTuber bear. So if you guys haven't seen my logo before, it's a bear that looks like this. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> so it's kind of a, it's a caricature. It's supposed to be a caricature of me as a bear, you know, got the little beardy going on. Um, so I, I don't wear that hat as often as I used to. It got kind of stanky, so <laughs> I got I'm, I, I'm gonna switch hats, but I need to get another one that looks like that one. Um, so it's supposed to be his arm, and it'd be funny. It'd be funny and fun to animate him, you know, like doing facial capture and animation and stuff. So maybe one day we'll see. And since I, since I create stylized characters like this, it's kind of my thing, you know, it's kind of in my lane. So it's not a, not a cringy VTuber thing. At least I, I hope not. Okay. There we go. Split the hidden. Hey, what's up, James? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Hey, from Brazil. Look at your past streams. Is that Morgan Freeman? Yes, sir. It is. I did that a couple streams ago, not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... Yeah, you gotta be, kind of be careful. Because it can get into the the furry territory, you know, and you just gotta make up your mind if you want if you wanna be in that group, I guess. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Okay. Now that this is a single plane, I can just adjust it. <laughs> sorry, Ashley. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh. My daughter loves those things. Anamorphic characters. Oswell went back to college for animation to get help in the 3D modeling industry animations. But nice. Oh, looks like I didn't turn on uh, mirroring, so let's fix it. So if you ever run into this issue where you're like, oh crap, I forgot to turn on uh, symmetry. What do I do? Well, since I worked on this side and not this side, and mirror and weld only mirrors from screen left to screen right when you're, the character's facing you, that means I need to mirror this first, then hit mirror and weld, boom, should fix it. There we go. And back in action. Actually, I want to turn off. Yeah, local symmetry is off. Okay, cool. And we're good and we're symmetrical and mirrored. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. When seeing these stylish characters, you guys make it feel so satisfying. Thanks, Gith. Welcome. Um, do you have your reference? I have a whole bunch of images off of my screen. Like a whole bunch of pictures and some drawings and some photos and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's weirdos in every group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones that have to ruin it for the rest of us. Okay, let's 
see if I can rotate this out. Gosh dang it. Why didn't I turn on symmetry? There we go. So, um, try to remember this, who it is that, that does 3D models of, of furries and he does a really good job. Jacob, what's his name? Jacob something. He's super duper good with the, with the shapes and the posing and all of that. Does a really nice, really nice work. Jacob and his last name starts with an O. What's the name of this model or character? I'm trying, I'm attempting to make Hagrid from the Harry Potter series. Not sure how good of a job I'm doing yet. I'm liking his face, but I'm still working out the rest. The Dynamo, you spelled it right. But the content feels creeptastic to me. Are you talking about Dynamo? What he, yeah, he, he's, yeah. That's his lane. I love the skill. But he's all about the pinups, you know. Okay, I want this to go low but curve. Jacob, oh, that guy, the guy with the hair. Jacob, here, let me let me look it up. Overick, I think. Overick. See, it eventually comes to me. I'm, I'm getting old and... There we go. I got to show you these. Well, okay. I got to show you Jacob's art because he's good. So, um... Yeah, see, look, oh my gosh, get back here. Yeah, this is Jacob's stuff. I mean, as far as like these types of characters go, I think he is probably my favorite. Yeah, just really, really nice. Really well done. Anyway, Jake, Jacob Ulrich is his name. Good stuff. Am I doing retopology? No, I'm not. I'm making this for 3D printing. I like to um, stay low with my polygons for as long as possible because it keeps things nice and clean and it makes things really editable, easily editable. Like if this was a dense mesh, I'd have a hard time. Do you have any suggestion for me? It's complicated. Um, I rush you. I this is you're you're watching the official Maxon ZBrush channel, so I like to keep the focus on ZBrush. Um, yeah, I don't really talk about other programs on here too much. I hope you understand. Do you consider it capable of definitely replacing other modeling applications? Talking about polygon modeling alone, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you can. It's quite possible. And there's lots of people who do, who do all of their hard surface stuff inside of ZBrush. <laughs> hey, cubed. Actually, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. You could, yeah, you could, you could just, you could just drop it. <laughs> Here it comes. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I'm sitting down. No, no, no. Avert your eyes.
All right, you better go to sleep then. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out. Okay, why does this keep snapping strangely? I love Hagrid's coat because it's really, uh, it's all chopped up, like hammered. It's been, it's seen some stuff. Okay, I better give him some arms. He's looking strange. Where's your arms, Hagrid, huh? There, done. <laughs> Just couldn't get, couldn't get it out, huh? I don't blame you. There, all done. Uh, did you make this model for any job or for fun? Just fun. This is my fun live stream. This is, this is my time. <laughs> Shane time. All right. Clip curve brush. Where are you? What's this tequila talk? <laughs> oh boy. I need a badunch sound effect for these jokes. That is one squared dude. Yeah, he does wear mittens occasionally. All about the dad jokes. Gidges, I don't know if that's how you say your name. Thank you very much. I have a half an hour to go, 30 minutes. What can I get done in 30 minutes? We'll see. You know, you know what's funny is that song was just playing in my ears. Hugh Lewis in the news. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like those guys, right? I'm going to give him these gigantic square hands um, and a shirt with a belt. Got a little haggard butt. Okay. Can I describe each time you're using some tools? I try my best. Okay, I don't explain every single thing I'm doing, but I do I do try. Okay, let's get his boots in here. PS1 Haggard, what's PS1 from PlayStation 1? He's got these big Santa Christmas boots. <laughs> oh. Do you like these? Ashley, you cracked me up. Thanks for hanging out. A cubed, everybody. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> to throw apples at you. Tomatoes. All right, I think I'm going to split this. Let's do a save as. So I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about his coat and his internal shirt. 
and how I can have them all hanging over each other. Because he's got like three layers. He's all layered up. <laughs> Priyanshu, what you want me to say? Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to split this, actually duplicate it, boom, and then I'm going to use the knife brush, BK knife curve, and just chop it right there, bonk. Hold on one second. Huh. That's funny. It made holes. The knife, because there was overlapping geometry. So with this, these are going to be his pants. I'm just going to do a close holes. Maybe they are closed in its um, inverted normals. What's going on here? Would I like to come to India sometime? I've never been out of my country. That would be fun for sure. Okay, why isn't it not why is it not closing them holes? That's strange. I'm gonna split hidden and see what I can do with this. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's just strange. And then... Let's close these holes. I'm just going to move these down. Actually, I'm going to just knife them off. Knife circle. No. There we go. I don't want them right up next to the top here. Now I can merge these down. Merge down. Okay. Okay. And it's weird colors because when you use a knife brush, it fills it with white. I can just fill it like this. And then I can Z remesh this, but I don't want to keep these weird leg hole groups. So I'm just going to focus in on that and hide everything else. Hit Control W to put it all in one poly group like this. And now I can stitch it together by using. Okay, come on down here. By using remesh by union. Boom. And accept. Turn symmetry back on. Okay, now we have this. And I want to cut the bottoms of the legs off so they have their own poly group. So I'm just going to use the knife brush down here. Cut them off. And that's what it does. Again, fills it, fills it, whoops, fills itself with white. So you can just fill it like this. And there's his pants. Okay, now I have a bunch of triangles and it's a mess of a geometry. So what I can do is I can do um, I can do a Z remesher, keep groups, and then uh, I'm going to turn smooth groups way down and then hit same. So it's going to use the exact same poly count and Z remesh that. And it gives me this. It's pretty good. Um, I can even do half, Z remesh it again, give me an even better result. 
And then I have this, um, I can just smooth out the transition between the upper and lower pants here. Oops, I don't, don't want to bring the bottom up. Okay, so now that we have his pants, we can go back to, let's see. So we're auto-saving. I'm going to fill these with a dark, almost black brown. And then we can go back to the body we had before and use the knife brush in the opposite direction. Get rid of these legs. Delete hidden. Show those pants so we know where they're at. We can hit this transparent so I can see the actual line through there. But this is the coat. So I want the coat to hang over the top. And what I could do is I could just, instead of using the knife brush, I could just um, select these poly loops. Like this and then I can just straighten them up and drag them down so so basically what I did is I hid a loop and the way you can do that is um, by s clicking on the select lasso and then holding control plus shift and clicking on an edge and that will hide that and then I can do a delete hidden and then since these are in the same poly group, I want them in different poly groups. So I can hit um, auto groups right here. It'll put everything in its, every island in its own poly group. And then I can do a mirror and weld because these are not symmetrical. See how this is purple and this is pink. Um, let's do a mirror and weld, not weld points, mirror and weld. And that will make this one purple. It'll go over to the other side and be purple. So now I can delete this guy. Okay. And I can turn on double so you can see both sides. Okay, and yes, the arms are going up inside here. Um, but now I'd have to I'd have to pull all this geometry down. So I can do that. Um, but I'm gonna undo. I just wanted to show you that. That's the way I would typically do it. But now we have the knife brush. B K knife curve. And I'm just going to cut it off straight. Boom. That. What that does, this new knife brush is absolutely incredible because, yes, it will create triangles around the edge, and yes, it will fill it with white, but it will also fill it with, it'll try and match the density of the object that you're slicing it out of, which is really nice so it doesn't fill it with a bunch of triangles. And now I can, um, if I want to stitch these together, I can. I think I might leave it. I'm not sure yet. Let's go topological and just get this coat transition looking a little better. Yeah, the, and it also adds a poly group. So it's great because then you can Z remesh it with, it, with this poly group and it's going to work great. Um, I could also do cut off the edge ends of these arms same way and it's gonna it will put asymmetrical poly groups but again I can just mirror and weld it let's grab um, make this kind of an, an orangey red color like that Okay, these, these boots, I left them as big globs. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So I'm going to Z-remesh these, um, but I'm not going to stitch the arms together because I'm not quite ready to do that yet. Um, but I am going to mirror this over. So... Mirror and weld, and then Z remesh same, just like I did before. Z remesh, keep groups, lower that smooth group to zero, 
Hit same, Z remesh, boom, beautiful. Okay, now we're good. Continue on. You, sir, may continue. I just wanted a better, I just wanted a better transition. I'm just using H polish to push that bump that I created down. I just want this lip transition to happen between the, the sleeves, that nice crease. Even though you're gonna, not going to see it because it'll be covered by the coat, but. Okay. Let's work on this. Fill this first. And then work on his boots. These are just boot boot globs. Bootglobs.com. <laughs> hey Shady, welcome to the stream. Like I said, he's got these Santa boots. funny because I get asked a lot what's my favorite brush and 80 85% of the time I'm using the move brush that's all I use you don't need no fancy brushes I want to do a sculpting challenge I keep saying this but that only uses the move brush and see what would happen Now it's hard to do stuff like this with the move brush, but it, you could still do it. It's possible. Okay, let's. I'm gonna, I, might, I think I might Z remesh this. Might as well knife. Let's clip. I might as well knife the bottom of that off. And the top. To get those poly groups. And then I can edit it way easier after I Z remesh it. You see how it's all wonky and weird? We'll make it not weird. All right, so again, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Uh, same, Z remesh, boom. Easy as that, and I want it even less, so let's go half, Z remesh, better, okay. And just use our move brush and just kind of start to make these look more like boots. <laughs> I like watching the the Lego movie, like the first one. And the boss, like the, the Lego boss man, he's like, all right, everybody take everything weird and blow it up. <laughs> so they can make new buildings, you know? Pretty funny. I find it funny. Okay. Give him some boot toes. Thicker boot toes. Uh why work with remesh first and then use I don't I don't use Dynamesh. Um, I like to use Z remesh because um, it keeps my keeps my model really smooth, as you can see. Okay, I want to shrink the center here. Um, what program am I using for the hand? Just got done making my V2 model. That seems like a great addition. It's called, uh, it's called spud arm. It's just an overlay for OBS.
Greetings from Mexico. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, this is OBS. It's just an overlay. It's a green overlay. Like, so you just use a chroma key green screen. Yeah. Um, but this is my art. This is my, uh, the hand I made. So you're, you'll have to make your own or find someone or a, a different one that someone else has made. Yeah, I made my own. This is a, I have a logo that's a bear of me. Okay, that's good on the boots. I'm taking too long on these boots. They're just boots. Come on. Just want to barely peeking out there. Okay, I'm just gonna mess around with this beard for a second. Let's duplicate it, hide the original, and then turn off symmetry. I'm just gonna try and um, block in some of these larger hairs with this, this uh, carved brush right here. Symmetry. I think I need to make it more wavy. Go back. More wavy. Tighter, tighter. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. But more random. redraw city sorry I'm just testing some stuff here <laughs> okay try it again with symmetry on so I don't have to draw so much one thing I've done is use clay tubes and just go down the mesh yeah I've done that before and serendipity shows you good shapes yeah for sure like happy accidents right sometimes what I like to do is do something like this and just kind of let let these shapes tell me um, as well as like going over them with with tubes on top you know 
and given some depth to it. But I'm just kind of screwing around, seeing what kind of a silhouette I can make. Oops. Because eventually I can, you know, grab the snake hook brush with, oh, with this Sculptress Pro and just kind of not RGB. Bring some of these down like this. End them like that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand, I understand. And thank you. And I could bring some of these out. Overlap them a little bit. What? Oh, my gosh. Okay. That is some dense mesh. Let's lower that. You know what? I'm just going to fill it with this. There we go. Okay. That's better. Much more manageable. I'm more, why is this being so slow? Nah, that's why. Okay. Kind of looks like icicles. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kind of playing with some stuff. Another thing I could do is some fiber mesh. I, I only have two seconds left, but. Yeah. <laughs> Burp. I was going to do. I was going to try some fiber mesh just for fun. Just to see what what it looks like. I know fiber mesh no. I should probably do that in sections too, but I'm just just for fun. I, I loaded in my curly fiber mesh brush. I'm just going to make all of his lower head be fiber mesh. Okay. Yeah, but I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. <laughs> Typical haggard line, right? Oh, that's funny. All right, here we go. Fiber mesh. You'll see this is... Fiber mesh is kind of a hair solution inside of ZBrush. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really hard to tame. But it's, it's fun to play with. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's some curls to start with. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, Wilbur? How you doing? Think up these max fibers. <laughs> yeah. Let's hide these. Thanks, Kyle. I need it. I'm going to need it. I should probably do this in sections so this down here can be long and the mustache can be short. And... All right. <laughs> this looks like a chia head. Ch -ch -ch chia Here, let me change my background color so you guys can see what he's looking like. Um, <laughs> 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 
Oh, that's funny. He's just buried in there with all his hair. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah, it's kind of working with the crazy hairs, right? So let me see. Um, make them thicker. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, gosh. It does, don't I wasn't going to say anything. It's pretty gross, right? Not the kind of hair that you want in chocolate. <laughs> Not that you want any hair in chocolate. Oh, goodness. All right, well, I wanted to try and see what it looked like. Let me see. Let's hide. I don't know where it went. <laughs> now he's got tusks. <laughs> oh gosh. That's too funny. Anyway, yeah, this is fiber mesh. You know, you know how it goes. It's fun to play with, but it rarely works. <laughs> kind of looks like Wreck-It Ralph a little bit. I have not seen that one. I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith, but I have not seen that one yet. Okay, guys. I think I'm going to wrap that up here. Um... I like, I wanted to like fill the screen like this. Yeah, eventually I'll get there. Oh, the hair is going to be quite the challenge. So we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Ziggy, the, the problem is this is going to be for 3D printing and, and single sided planes don't really work. You'd have to give them some sort of thickness. And I don't want to support all those individual hairs, you know, when it's 3D printed. So I'd have to get super creative. But um, I think what I need to do is work large to small and overlay all the wild, crazy poking out hairs. And yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll work. We'll get there. All right. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next Monday. How's that? As usual, I give away my brushes for free. You can check them out over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I also teach an online course if you want to learn how to create crazy characters like this one. Um, check it out. And uh, in the meantime, have a wonderful week, you guys. And we'll catch you next Monday. All right, take care. See ya. See everybody.